Welcome once again to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. And for this video, I'd like to talk about um, what makes up uh, muscle fiber. In other words, muscle cells, what's the basic anatomy of a muscle cell? We're doing this in preparation so that we can understand um, excitation, contraction, coupling, and then finally the sliding filament theory of muscle. I realize I should probably put in here, what is excitation contraction coupling and what is the sliding filament theory? Um, in simplest terms, excitation contraction coupling, ultimately it was asking the question, how does the neuron take a signal to the muscle cell that's going to cause the muscle cell to contract? So that signal making it from the neuron to the muscle cell signaling for contraction, that's excitation, excitation contraction coupling. And the sliding filament theory is the way we understand how muscle cells actually create that mechanical force where they shorten themselves. So how do they actually contract? How does that work down on the molecular level? That's the sliding filament theory. So we'll talk about those later, but I thought you might want to know what they were since I just said them. Once you understand what a muscle cell, how it's constructed or how it develops, um, that'll help you understand excitation contraction coupling. So I'm going to draw a picture of a muscle cell or attempt to draw an image of a muscle cell. First of all the muscle cell has a membrane around the outside just like every other um, cell in the body but in the muscle cell we have a special name for that membrane it's called the sarcolemma. The sarcolemma. Okay, the next thing that we need to know about are transverse tubules. The, a transverse tubule is an invagination of the cell's membrane creating a tube that goes down through the cell. And these tubes don't go straight down through, they actually wrap around what we call myofi myofibrils. And I'll draw my myofibrils in red inside a skeletal muscle fiber, the myofibrils will be these long cylindrical organelles. And the T-tubules kind of come down and go around these myofibrils. The T-tubule will stretch there's other myofibrils in there, I've only drawn one. It'll go down and all the way through the cell and come out somewhere on the other side. And they're a network of tubules. Um, another thing that's kind of wrong with this picture is um, I'm not cutting the cell in half. If I make little circles here and here, maybe you'll see. This is just a pore, an opening that goes into the cell. If I were looking at the surface of the cell, I would see all of these little holes around the outside of the cell membrane. Those would be the openings of the T-tubules. So we got the T-tubules. The next thing that we need to know about is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And for this I want to get a different color marker. So I'll be right back. So I got my green marker. Um, you may recall from when we talked about the anatomy of the cell in the beginning of the semester. Um, we talked about endoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum in a muscle cell is kind of like endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, but it's different in that it's not in one specific location, it's throughout the muscle fiber. And its major job in terms of how the muscle works is to store calcium. I'm going to try and draw the sarcoplasmic reticulum. It's this web work of tubes and right next to the T-tubules you'll see a thickened area of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and then that thickened area will come out and connect to these other kind of fibrous areas that stretch over the myofibrils. So what I've got here within this green is this green compartment. 
and stretching away from it are these green tubes that go across. And if I make another T-tubule over here, over at this T-tubule, there will also be an area where the sarcoplasmic reticulum becomes thicker and aligns itself right next to the T-tubule. And again, there's connections in between. Now again, one of the major things to remember here is this is a storage place for calcium. That's what the sarcoplasmic reticulum does. It stores and releases calcium when needed. Each side of each of the T-tubules will have one of these thickened areas um, of sarcoplasmic reticulum. Those thickened areas of the sarcoplasmic reticulum that come up to the T-tubules are called cisternae. And two cisternae, if this is the T-tubule, there's a cisternae on this side and a cisternae on that side. And that ultimately makes up three tubes. So it's called the triad. So, so far we've got sarcolemma, the muscle fiber cell membrane. We've got transverse tubules, an invagination of the cell membrane that runs through the cell. We've got sarcoplasmic reticulum, and of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, we know what cisternae are now, um, and we know what the triad is. We know what myofibrils are, these long collections of muscle fibers, or of, uh, sorry, there's protein fibers inside of the myofibril that we'll talk about in a second. Um, in fact, that is the next thing. Inside of the myofibrils, are these areas um, or are these proteins and the proteins are called myofibers so inside of the myofibril myofibril and inside of there are the myofibers It's the arrangement of these myofibers inside of the myofibrils, by the way, if I try and correct my drawing a little bit, that gives the muscle cell its striated appearance. So I'm going to try and erase some of these lines just so that you can hopefully see a little bit of a striated appearance. What I'm going to do next is blow up a piece of one of the myofibrils. If I take just a little section here, try and blow it up to a much larger picture. What you would see looks a little something like this. There's protein fibers. We're now down on the molecular level. There's protein fibers coming from each side and these are the thin filaments, also known as actin. And in the midst of these thin filaments, we'll see thicker filaments. And that's the way the molecules are arranged at the molecular level inside of the muscle cell. And I'll put the names on here again. The thin ones here are actin, and the thick ones are myosin. So again, sarcolemma is the cell membrane. These tubes that go through the cell are T-tubules, or transverse tubules. The sarcoplasmic reticulum I have represented as green in here. And 
and the cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum is up against the T-tubules. Basically, as long as you know that the sarcoplasmic reticulum comes right up to the T-tubules, you'll be in good stead. Um, the myofibrils are these cylindrical structures inside of the muscle fiber, and the myofibrils are made up of these proteins, actin and myosin, the myofilaments, or myofibers. Actin is the thin filament, and myosin is the thick filament. That's all the major parts of a muscle fiber that you need to know. Um, another thing I guess maybe you should know for each one of these skeletal muscle cells is that each skeletal muscle cell this is the an axon of a neuron that's coming down and this part here is called the axon terminal the sarcolemma on the other side of this axon terminal is invaginated well it's convoluted it has these little there's, there's more surface area there that's what those convolutions are all about um, every muscle fiber has a neuron connected to it every skeletal muscle fiber has a neuron connected to it and that neuron is going to send a signal which will cause this muscle to contract now that we've finished the basic anatomy of the muscle cell down to the molecular level the next video is going to look at this structure at the molecular level a little more deeply and then after that we'll be able to get into how the muscle actually contracts. Thanks again for watching and look out for the next video and if you have any questions or comments please feel free to email or call me. Thanks again for watching.